Welcome to this instructional video on packing process scale BPG columns with protein A resins. Proper column packing is crucial for achieving optimal purification performance in your downstream processing. In this video, we'll guide you through the step-by-step -step process of packing the BPG bioprocess glass column with protein A resin, focusing on techniques that ensure uniform packing and maximize column efficiency. We'll cover everything from equipment preparation and resin handling to the actual packing process. Whether you're new to column packing or looking to refine your technique, this video will provide valuable insights to help you achieve consistent and high quality results. Let's begin with a list of terminologies and the equipment you'll need for this procedure. L-settled is the gravity settled bed height. L-consolidated is the consolidated bed height. L-packed is the packed bed height. Some common abbreviations you'll see in here in the instructions are CF, which is the compression factor. This is the optimum level of compression required to reach the target bed height against the gravity settled bed. PF, which is the packing factor. This is the optimum level of compression required to reach the target bed height against the consolidated settled bed. The diagram on the right highlights the difference between these. Here's a list of the equipment that you'll need for this procedure. You'll need a BPG column, ideally between a 10 and 45 centimeter column ID, a pump or actor system, a pressure gauge, and a relief valve. Calculating the correct slurry concentration prior to column packing is a crucial step to allow for correct and easy column packing. There are several ways that this can be done one of which is gravity settling. This is performed by allowing one litre of resin to settle in a measuring cylinder for 24 to 48 hours. A slurry concentration of 50 to 70% is recommended. Once the slurry concentration has been calculated, this is then used to calculate the required slurry volume. The column volume is multiplied by the compression factor and this is divided by the slurry concentration. For the BPG 300 column packed in this instructional video to a 20 cm bed height, the required volume of slurry with a 70% slurry concentration is 24.2 litres. Prior to priming the column, the system or pump to be used needs to be set up with a pre-column relief valve and a pressure gauge. The lines will need to be primed to remove any air present. Ensure that the gaskets are correctly aligned to avoid any leaking during packing. The bottom of the column can now be attached and a low flow applied to add one to two centimeters of water to displace any air. The calculated volume of resin can then be added to the column and if needed, top up the liquid level to 40 cm using the packing buffer. Perform a buffer exchange from the storage solution into the packing buffer by either washing the column with a low flow or decanting the liquid level after settling the resin. Once the resin is in the packing buffer, the resin needs to be mixed to a homogeneous slurry. Best practice is to clean the sides of the column of any residual resin. This can be done using the packing buffer.
The resin then needs to be allowed to settle up to 5 cm before the top adapter is added to the column. This avoids any resin being lost above the adapter. Prior to attaching the adapter, ensure that the O-ring is loose. Manually insert the adapter into the column, keeping the adapter flat The bolt should then be added to the column to secure the adapter. Using suitable tools, the bolt should then be tightened in an opposite sequence. This helps to preserve the o-ring and apply an even seal. When lowering the adapter into the column, allow excess buffer to pass around the column head. If the adapter is above the liquid level, lower the adapter until the supernatant is completely above the column head. The next step is to tighten the o-ring. At this point, to remove air from the inner tube of the adapter, lower the adapter slightly to push liquid through and remove the air. This should only be done if there is room above the resin in the liquid available to do so. Starting with a consolidation flow of 30 cm an hour, attach the tube into the top adapter. Be sure that the bottom is not capped and that the air is out of the line and adapter before attaching. If air bubbles are present below the frit at this stage, a useful way to remove the air bubbles is to open the o-ring and allow the low flow to push the air bubbles out below the adapter. You can also gently twist the adapter tube in to assist with this. The next stage of the packing process is to increase the pressure applied to the column. This can be completed by setting the relief valve at the packing pressure or adjusting the relief valve to increase the pressure to the desired packing pressure. The pressure should be increased the optimum packing pressure for the resin and column diameter to be used. This can be found in the resin information. For this example packing of DuraCycle A50, the packing pressure of DuraCycle A50 in a 30cm ID column is 2.2 bar. Once the packing pressure is reached, allow the bed to stabilise at this pressure 20 to 30 minutes. Once the bed has stabilised, mark the bed height on the column. A useful tip when packing can be to mark a second line above the target bed height which corresponds to the distance between the bottom of the column head and the bottom of the o-ring. This can make it easier to discern when the target bed height has been reached by the bottom of the column head and avoid over compression or under compression of the bed. The adapter now needs to be lowered to the marked bed height, which is a step that needs to be performed as quickly as it is safe to do so, avoiding too much spring back from the compressed bed. To complete this step, first stop the flow from the pump or system. The top tubing either needs to be disconnected or directed to a waste or buffer tank. Open the o-ring and lower the adapter to 1cm above the current bed height. Now close the o-ring and continue to lower the adapter to 1-2mm to two millimeters below the marked bed height. The column is now ready for column efficiency testing once column conditioning has been performed. The efficiency of the column is affected by the column packing. So how do you know if you have a well-packed column? First of all, you need to run a test which is normally water equilibration 
followed by loading a 0.05% column volume of a small tracer, either acetate or sodium chloride. This gives a peak that can be investigated to show your column's properties. One measurement looked at is the height equivalent of theoretical plates, HETP. To calculate the HETP, we need to look at the width of the peak at half height. This value is used to calculate the number of theoretical plates, or N. The higher the number, the greater the efficiency of the column. This is then converted into HETP by dividing the length of the column with the number of theoretical plates. The lower the HETP, the better the resolution and the more efficient the separation. Efficiency is optimised when N is maximised and the HETP is minimised. HETP will vary with the flow rate, so it is important to have an SOP with set values for testing the column. Not only the width of the peak, but also the shape of the peak can be a good indicator of packing quality. Peak symmetry can be checked by dividing the first half width at 10% peak height by the second half width. A value of 1 would be a perfect peak. In reality, a value of 0.8 to 1.6 should function well depending on your application. The asymmetry value is independent of flow rate. Here is an example of a column performance test result. Thank you for watching. You can find more resources, guides, interviews, and much more in our Bioprocessing Knowledge Hub, which can be accessed using this QR code.